Now I would like to invite, uh, to give the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Uh, you have the floor, Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, allow me to welcome our dear friend, the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs from the Russian Federation for being President with us, and I thank him for the clarifications he just provided us. Mr. President, the proverb goes, I quote, But actions will always tell the truth. Words may lie, but actions will always tell the truth. The truth that is known to all is that the suffering of the Syrian people is the result of the crimes of different terrorist groups of various names and loyalties, and among their ranks, foreign terrorist fighters. The suffering is the result of the crimes of the aggression, war crimes and crimes against humanity perpetrated by the U.S.-led coalition, its tools and its proxy militias, in addition to a barbaric economic terrorist action. The truth that is known to all is that the humanitarian affair has been used from the start by governments of member states inside and outside of this council as a tool to target my country and ruin the reputation of Syrian state institutions, undermine their efforts, and turn public opinion against them. How can anyone believe that the claims of governments of these countries in their reprehensible statements is based on their concern for the Syrian people? How long will your council be unable to uphold the principles of international law and the charter and compel these aggressor states to end their aggressive practices against my country and to hold them responsible for these practices? Some colleagues mentioned the situation in Idlib. I have clarified in my statement before you on the 17th of May the reality on the ground given the control of the terrorist group Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, which, by the way, is affiliated with al Nusra Front, which is part of al-Qaeda in the Levant, which is part of al-Qaeda in Iraq, which is part of al-Qaeda from Afghanistan. So we are all talking about al-Qaeda. Regardless of the designation, we are talking about a terrorist group designated by your own council. I have clarified in my statement before you the reality on the ground in Idlib, given the control of Hayat Tahrir al-Sham and its affiliated entities over large areas in Idlib and their terrorist attacks on neighboring areas, safe areas, and Russian and Syrian forces positions, as stated by my Russian colleague. I am still waiting for a response to the questions I have asked last time when it comes to your reaction if you are faced with similar circumstances and if a terrorist group takes control of one of your cities and uses this city to target other cities and undermine your safety and security. We have one question. The ambassador of Belgium on behalf of the Copen holders, asked five questions. We only have one question, which is the question I have just asked. When will you recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that the right we are exercising is the same right you have exercised to confront terrorist attacks against the Bataclan Theater, Charlie Hebdo newspaper in Paris, Nice, London, Boston, Brussels, and other cities? These terrorists you have confronted in your own countries were not really equipped with Turkish rocket launchers and tanks or modern U.S. military supplies and communication technologies or media mercenaries, including the U.S. citizen Bilal Abdel Karim, the correspondent 
of the terrorist al-Nusra Front group working with Sky News and CNN, or Western experts in chemical weapons, as is the case with the terrorists holding civilians hostage in Idlib. The meeting held two days ago by the Turkish intelligence, including representatives from al-Nusra Front and other terrorist groups, including Jaysh al-Azza, Ahrar al-Sham, Sukur al-Sham, Jaysh al-Ahrar, refutes all that was promoted in the past years when it comes to the so-called moderate Syrian opposition. It also proves without a doubt yet again that governments of states sponsoring terrorism are providing support to these armed terrorist groups. And allow me to show you photo evidence. This is the photo of the leaders of terrorist groups that held a meeting in Idlib sponsored by Turkish intelligence. It was this meeting was presided or the president of this meeting was the head of Al Nusra Front. It was sponsored by Turkey and some countries in this council. What is important is that some people in this photograph sitting with Al Nusra Front controlling over 99% of Idlib, some of them were part of Astana, of the Astana process. So some of them are compelled, they're obligated not to fight alongside these ter terrorist groups against the Syrian government. And they are obligated to honor the Astana agreements, including the establishment of the de-escalation zone. This is a photograph of these moderates in Idlib. Mr. President, for how long will your council ignore the suffering of tens of thousands of civilians in areas where there where illegitimate foreign forces are present are present? Ignoring the suffering of these civilians proves yet again the scale of lies and hypocrisy of some in dealing with the humanitarian situation. Allow me to highlight some aspects of this suffering. First, the United States and the group Maghawir Thawra continues to detain thousands of civilians in al rukban in the occupied 10th area. They prevent them from leaving the camp and returning home they refuse to dismantle the camp. We call on the Security Council to compel the United States to cease its obstruction of joint Russian and Syrian efforts to end the suffering of the residents of this camp. These efforts resulted in allowing more than 12,000 people to leave the camp. Allow me to express reservations to what Ms. Ursula has said in her statement when she said that she urges the Syrian authorities to allow the entry of a third humanitarian convoy to a Rukban camp in Tanf. This gives the impression that those who are obstructing the entry of the convoy to Tanf is the Syrian government. This is the message that you conveyed when you said what you said. I would like to correct this information that you have. Ocha knows, and you know, madam, and the Secretary General knows, the entire world knows, this council knows, that the Syrian government approved the first convoy, whereas the occupying US forces refused the entry of the convoy for 40 days. You know, the OCHA, the Council, the Secretary General knows that the Syrian government approved the second convoy, whereas the U.S., which is the occupying force, refused the entry of this convoy for four months to 10th. And you know, and everyone knows, and OCHA and the Secretary General knows that by virtue of the Geneva Conventions, the occupying force is concerned with the protection of civilians. The U.S. occupying forces in al Tanf are concerned by virtue of the Geneva Conventions to provide medical assistance and uh, food assistance to those under their occupation. Please rectify my information if I'm mistaken. 
for what are the United States doing over a wide area of my country? What is the position of OCHA and this council? What are the United States doing in Syria? Second, the situation in El Hol camp is just as desperate as the situation in El Rukban camp. Al Hol camp is under the control of U.S. proxy militias known as the Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF. These are militias that grew with the support of the U.S.-led coalition, supplemented with ISIL elements, which are now part of their ranks. They have perpetrated many massacres, carried out brutal practices, detained and tortured Syrian civilians that have called for the return of the Syrian, Syrian state institutions so that they can carry out their role. Allow us uh, to recall that the United States and its gangs are plundering and smuggling oil, historical monuments, national resources. They are undermining and destroying our Syrian economy and fabricating crises that have had an impact on the day-to-day -day life of the Syrian people. Third, we must put an end to the suffering of our people in the areas under the illegal control of the invading forces of the Turkish regime. We call on the Security Council to take decisive and immediate action to put an end to the practices of the Turkish regime and their attempts to change the identity of these areas and to put an end to his delusion, to the delusions of Erdogan of bringing back the Ottoman Empire. Those days are gone. I am saying this because I've heard my colleague from the United Kingdom thank Turkey for what they are doing in Idlib. The Syrian Arab Republic would like to recall that the presence of any foreign military forces on its territory without its approval is an aggression and an occupation and will be dealt with accordingly. Our vision is clear. We will spare no effort to rid our citizens in Idlib from the control of terrorist groups that have taken them as human shields and to put an end to the aggressions of these terrorist groups against innocent civilians in neighboring towns and cities. We call on all countries concerned to withdraw their nationals among foreign terrorist fighters estimated at tens of thousands to withdraw them from my country immediately and to hold them accountable for their crimes to make sure that they're not, they don't commit future crimes, and not to recycle these terrorists so that they can pursue their terrorism in other countries, such as Africa and other areas. I would like to ask the representative of Western states in this council, how can elements of terrorist groups and foreign terrorist fighters move to Libya, Afghanistan, Central Asia, and the Niger's boundaries with Algeria and others without the support and sponsor of governments with influence. We have warned of this time and again. We have said that these countries are using terrorism to undermine the security and stability of countries to serve their own political agendas. Our second question is the following. The Secretariat of the United Nations, with the partnership of 38 international counterterrorism institutions, was it unable to identify the governments of states sponsoring the ter terrorism that has been targeting my country for the last eight years, it is not that complicated, really. It's not like we're trying to identify the gender of angels. Ladies and gentlemen, we will liberate every part of the Syrian Arab Republic. We will rid it of any illegal foreign president presence. This is a sovereign right in accordance with the principles of international law, the provisions of the Charter and the Astana process, which has reaffirmed the sovereignty, unity, and territorial integrity of the territory of the Syrian Arab Republic. We call on OCHA to honor its obligations when it comes to the suffering of the Syrian people as 
as a result of the unilateral economic course of measures imposed by the United States and European Union and other states against Syria, they have had a negative impact on the day-to-day -day lives of the Syrian people. The Ministry of Health in Syria cannot even access material and equipment used in surgeries. This is a form of economic terrorism. It is unacceptable and should not go on. Again, we call on OCHA to stop including in its reports claims that are baseless, that are fabricated by entities in the UN office in Gaziantep and in OCHA to implement the agendas of the United States and its allies. In conclusion, Mr. President, some members of this council, by this I mean the United States, Britain and France, then continue to use deceit and misinformation to implement their hegemony policies so that the world goes back to the era of colonialism, mandate and trusteeship. These countries continue to use the Security Council to protect terrorists and to undermine the progress of the Syrian army when confronting terrorist groups supported by these countries, including instructing the terrorist White Helmets Group, which is a branch of Al Nusra Front, to fabricate a so called use of chemical of chemical material and to accuse the Syrian government of that act. It would not be the first time for these two countries have fabricated the lie of the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And similar to what happened when the Syrian army made progress in eastern Ghouta, Aleppo, and other areas, we hear senior officials from these countries and their ambassadors in this council making threats in case chemical material was used, as if these senior officials and these ambassadors are telling armed terrorist groups in Idlib that the only way to save you is only if chemical weapons were used. So use these poisonous chemical weapons against civilians in Idlib, fabricate evidence, bring false witnesses as usual, manipulate the crime scene as you have done before, and then we will be ready with our political and media capabilities to accuse the Syrian government and to come to your aid. This has happened before, and we should prevent its recurrence in the present and in the future. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Syrian Arab, <coughs> Syrian Arab Republic.